what you're looking at here, you're looking at a door that goes to a 1976 Mercedes-Benz. Now, I've been working on this door for several days. You can see the body work that I've been doing to it. And we got a serious, serious situation in this area right here. Now, I have hammered and dollied this. I pulled the dent out. I have slap hammered it. I have filed it down. And we still got a situation right here. I have applied. And when I say applied, I've taken it off, put it on, taken it off, put it on. I put uh, Bondo and filler on this area approximately four times. And then what I did after that, I went ahead and hand block sanded it because when you hand block sand something, you're going to get a more precise sanding out of the situation. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to show you when you run into a situation like this and it seems like you just can't get the bodywork proper or body work right, I'm going to show you what to do to fix that situation. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. what we're talking about here I want everybody to take a look at this this is a ruler this is a four foot ruler and what we're going to do is we're going to take that four foot ruler and we're going to set it on our door which is approximately um, four feet long you can see from this end over to this end so the ruler goes all the way across from one end to the other but I want you to pay close attention to the center of that ruler which is right here Look what happens when I lift it up and put it down. You can see light between there. And you can see it all the way down to about here where we actually lose our dent on the door. So once again, we're going to take our ruler and we're going to slide it across slowly. And if you look close, right there in that area, you can see light shining through. Now let me come over here and it goes away right when we hit this area right here. So we got an extremely low spot on this door right here. And if I run my hand across this, it feels really good. If I take my ruler and I put it across there, it still looks really good. Our main subject is right in this area here. So once again, I've applied filler to this area several times. And it seems like I just can't get it out, so I'm going to show you what we're going to do to level that out very quickly and very, uh, should I say, sufficient and proper so we can quit jerking off and dicking around and wasting time and money. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and mix up some more Bondo. Now, you can call it whatever you want. Um, I call it Bondo. Um, all the politically correct jerk-offs out there call it filler. Okay, and I don't care what you say, it's still called Bondo. Any way you look at it, it's Bondo. What we'll do now is we're going to get our Bondo out. And I don't think we're going to need that much. Uh, normally, when I mix up Bondo, I tend to over mix, but that's just me. And a little more there. 
I always over mix it, especially when I'm to the end of the job like we are now. Because what I'm doing now is basically the end of this job. I got two other spots that I got to work with. Um, besides our bondo, what we're going to do is we're going to add some plastic honey to our bondo. And what that's going to do, that's going to help our bondo flow out to a creamy um, texture. And it's also going to help it lay out and flow a lot better. So we're going to get our hardener here. And then we're going to add the proper hardener for the weather that we're working in. You heard me right. A lot of people out there are saying, well, you got to precisely measure the hardener for the Bondo. No, you don't. Okay, I'm going to tell you why. If it's 40 degrees outside and you put the exact same hardener in it that you would if it's 85 degrees, that Bondo will never dry. It'll take hours and hours for it to dry. And when it finally does dry, it will not cure properly. So in 38 degree or 40 degree weather, you need to add more hardener to your product. So it will dry efficiently and accurately to do the job you need. Alright, I don't care what anybody says out there, Mr. Politically Correct uh, Jerk Off guy that thinks you're the professional and know everything, you're wrong. I'm sorry, I put that finger up. You're wrong, okay? Um... I've been doing this shit all my life, and I think I know how to mix Bondo up. So, according to the weather that we're working in, which is about 60 degrees, we're going to go ahead and add the equivalent amount of hardener. Now, while I'm mixing this up, I want to go ahead and tell you about hardener. Um, they give you one bottle per gallon. If you're doing a lot of body work, in the winter time, you're going to use more hardener. That means you're going to have to buy more hardener because one bottle of hardener doesn't cut it. Um, you're going to use about a, a, a you're going to use about one tube and a, a quarter in the winter time versus the summer. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, theories on hardeners and bondos, but right now what we need to do is we need to get over there and use this bondo before it dries. All right, so remember we had that big low spot in this area here. So what we're going to do, and I used a different color hardener so you can see the difference, um, the variations when we do this. I'm going to take my spreader, and I'm going to add my Bondo to my door, just like you're watching here. And I know the low spot is up in this area. So we're going to start feathering it out as we go down, which it really doesn't matter anyway. But I'm really going to fill it in in the center right there really good. So we got our bondo applied how we want it. And remember I told you that I've already put several... Uh, spread to Bondo on our work here. Let me get this out of the way. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our four foot level that you're looking at right here and I'm going to set it down. Look what I'm doing guys. I'm going to set it down right there and I am going to spread across it. Is my arm in the way there? Let me move the camera so I can get it out of the way. So I'm going to take my stick, let me go ahead and get in the back of it, maybe that'll work, okay. I'm going to take my um, yard stick here, which is metal, and look what I'm doing, people. Did you see that? I'm going to do it one more time, and I'm actually using a good force of pressure here. So what I just did is made a mess. Let me clean this off real quick. Because when you do this, uh, you got to be on the stick of getting it done properly. Uh, let me get the Bondo off. And I'm going to put some more Bondo in this area here. 
I'm going to take all that Bondo off and I'm going to put it right here on this edge because it looks like it comes way out here, people. So let me get this cleaned off and then we're going to add that Bondo right there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do it again. So you can kind of see the area that we're working with here. And what I'm going to do, because I can still see it's a little bit over here, I'm going to take my spreader and I'm just going to feather that out. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to feather that out. But I want to get a little bondo on it because it's already drying. See, there we go. So our dent or our imperfection was a little bigger than we were working with. And you can see how using the straight edge, the four foot straight edge on this situation really opened our eyes. Okay, now that we have let our bongo dry, and I can actually feel that there's a totally different situation going on here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take our air file with 36 grit, and we are going to air file it down. Now, I want to let you all know something that if you let your bondo dry too long, it gets super hard and it's hard to um, control. And when you let the bondo dry longer than should be, let me say, to work with, uh, what happens is you actually end up taking more off. So the longer you let it sit, the harder it is to form, I might say. So we've been letting this sit for approximately 20 minutes. Like I said, it's like 60 degrees outside, and we're going to go ahead and get this sanded down. Okay, there you go. Uh, what we did is we have just air filed the Mondo down. Remember we used our uh, straight edge on that. You can still see there's a little imperfection there. We don't want to go any farther though. What we want to do, we want to get our straight edge, we want to get our metal stick and we want to check it. And then we're going to come back, we're going to put a very thin layer of polyester filler on that just to fill all these in and I think it's going to be done. So if we look at our stick right here, and you can see it goes from one end all the way to the other, we're going to go ahead and pull it across and see what it looks like. I notice there's just a little bit right in this area right here. If I look right here, it's a little bit low, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking that when I that when I put my filler on here my polyester filler I think that's going to go ahead and square that up all right now what we're using here for our final coat is a finishing putty a polyester finishing putty if you look in the background there you can see it's a glazing putty you might call it and what this does I want you to look at that can you see how it's running on? It's just going to flow out really, really nice. So we're going to go ahead and take our finishing putty just like this. And we're going to get that center right there. That's the only place we want to put it. Right in that center area. Because that's where our low spot still is, remember? And this will be our final coat, by the way, just to let everybody know. Put a little more right in here. You can see I'm actually just slopping it on here. 
I'm not really getting and you can see as I'm putting it down as you can see I'm gonna say that again um, you can see it flowing out now normally that's where you would stop right there but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this right here and then we're gonna take our stick one more time and we're not gonna put any pressure in the middle and we are going to pull it down just like that you see how I just did that and I believe that will be the end of the subject right there look what happened we got a piece of trash in it and I gotta get that out so I'm gonna have to drag it one more time we're gonna set it there and we're gonna drag it just like that and then what I'll do with my finishing putty is I'll come back and I'm just gonna feather those edges out just like that just like that I'm just feathering out the edges and then there you go just like that now we're gonna let that dry and then when we come back I'll show you what we're gonna do and then that should fix our issues on this door okay now that our polyester filler or glazing putty whatever you want to call it is dry okay what we're gonna do is we got two sanders here and if you look close at them I don't have an air hose hooked up to them that's because what we're gonna do is we're gonna hand sand the rest of this to finish it out now on one sander I got 36 and on the other sander I have 80 grit so we're gonna take the 80 grit and we're gonna put it over here and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 36 grit and the reason I am hand sanding this is because if I use my air file on this I'm fighting I'm fighting good versus bad and what I'm saying is when you're hand sanding you can basically tell how much you're taking off whereas if you're air filing it's moving so radically fast that we don't know really what's going on and we don't want to lose our body work in the other areas that are already done remember this uh, imperfection this dent is in the middle of everything else that we're doing so we're going to take our hand sander and I need to get me a new piece of sandpaper this one here is pretty much used up so let me change that out and then we'll get right back to it there we go all right so we're going to go ahead and hand sand this door and we're going to go ahead and basically we're going to take the glaze of it off and we're going to break it down we're not going to finish it with this we're just breaking it down getting it to where we want it to be see what's going on here I'm taking the glaze off and I'm using the area as a guide coat once I see that it all looks like this right here this area here where we can get rid of all these dark spots that's when we're going to transfer over to our 80 grit okay so we got it mainly blocked down to where we want it so what we can do now we can go ahead and get our 80 grit block and go ahead and transfer that over and finish it out so I got my 80 grit right here 
let's go ahead and finish this out and see what happens. And the reason I use a broom is because it doesn't cause any dust in the air, so keeps your shop a lot cleaner. Okay, we're going to go ahead and set our stick, or our uh, straight edge, and once again you can see it's all the way across, and we're going to see what happens. Let me get over here, and then I'm going to drag it my way, and if you look real close, you can see we got rid of all the low spots. The door is perfectly level all the way across. And from using this right here, we accomplished what we wanted. So I'm really happy with the work. I'm satisfied with it. That took approximately in between waiting around approximately an hour and a half to get it all straightened out. I still got to do a little bit of sanding on this edge right here, clean that up, but as far as the overall perfection of the bodywork goes, I think we accomplished what we needed to do. And the reason we did that is because we used our imagination and used the tools that needed to be used to do the job properly. Let's go ahead and look at the car. You can see I've been really busy block sanding this car out by hand. Here's the door, the other door that I'm working on. And you can see, to do it right, it takes a lot of hand sanding to get it proper. Here was a, a mess that we had, that we had to completely redo. This is the uh, where the door meets the fender. And basically we almost had to do the exact same thing that we did to our door. So this is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete. Block sanding. This is, uh, how many days have I been into this? This is like the fifth day of block sanding. That's all I've been doing is block sanding this car by hand. Um, here's an imperfection. Basically the same situation. It was a low spot. And uh, we're fixing it up. Repeating our process and doing it right. My friend Pete, your friend Pete. Everybody's friend Pete. Keeping it real, showing you how to do it right. And uh, keeping calm, cool, and collective all at the same time, which is a very hard friggin' job. Take it easy, guys. Thanks for watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.